Hi everyone and welcome to Murphy's Law Garage. Today I show you how to install JNL's oil separator for your Whipple S650. Come along. Dang it. All right, so whenever you open the package, you're gonna have some koozies for your beers. Uh, it's a little, little too early right now for a beer, so I'm not going to do the beer route. Uh, there's a little uh, product placement advertisement here. And then some uh, oil separator empty intervals that you can put on your glass. And a uh, uh, JNL sticker. Also, you have the can, bracket, and then screws, obviously. But you might see here that... This is just a hunk of hose with some fittings. Well, the reason why this is this way is that JNL hasn't managed to get a Whipple S650 into the shop yet so that they can pre-measure and cut and fit and angle all of these things in just the right way. They have the fittings on the can angled, but they don't have the exact measurements they need for this as well as pictures of the installation. So this video is gonna serve two purposes. I'm going to install the Whipple do-it-yourself kit for you, take measurements, orient the fittings, give them measurements and pictures so that hopefully maybe you'll be able to order one already done if you're not uh, comfortable doing the do-it-yourself kit. Uh, but if you do get the do-it-yourself kit, you'll know exactly how to cut these lines and, and have it ready ahead of time. Uh, now, this kit is not on JNL's site from what I saw last, I checked yesterday. You have to call or message them and ask for the Whipple kit for an S650. All that being said, let's get all of this put into that Whipple S650 sitting outside. Hi everyone and welcome to the Whipple Stage 1 S650. Here is our JNL oil separator. Now, you can see I've got the aluminum bracket mounted onto it. There's two Phillips machine screws that come with and I've got them loose right now. Orients just like this. The area we're going to be working in today is here on the passenger side of the motor and that bracket is going to end up being bolted right here where this ground is uh, bolted to the strut tower. The oil separator will end up sitting on here just like this. Now to do this we're going to need to remove this ground and we're going to put this stud in its place. The stud is going to hold the ground down. And then this nut is going to hold the uh, oil separator onto that stud. Now that is an 8 millimeter bolt right here. I'm going to go ahead and get that removed and show you how to get the stud oriented. All right. So with that bolt out, you're going to see we've got the exposed hole here. And here is the stud that will now go into this hole. I'm going to go ahead and thread that in, just like that. Boom. With a 13 millimeter socket, we're going to get down on here and tighten that ground back up. Now, you don't want to go super tight with this and strip that bolt that's in the, the body here, but this is a ground, so you don't want it to be loose. Make sure it's clean. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to slip the can onto here and then this 10 millimeter nut is going to hold the can down. I wanted to show you this fun tidbit right here and an extreme attention to detail. You can see JNL's got their logo here on top of the oil separator. And they also put it on top of the bracket because, well, the bracket couple covers the logo. So. I think that's really awesome. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get these screws tightened up. All right, and just like that, the oil separator is now on its stud with that 10 millimeter nut. Now I have closed the hood to ensure that I've got good clearance here to ensure that that's a good mounting height with it sitting on top of the stud. Also, you can see here, what I, like I've told you, you, I've got it snug but not tight so I can orient it. And if you look right here, you've only got so much room to the relay box as well as that fitting right here, the uh, that connector right there next to the bottom of the removable part of the separator. So you want to make sure you kind of get yourself right in that valley. 
and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my lines and fittings in. Uh, we can go ahead and pop this guy off, which should just be squeeze and pull. And this one's going to be much more difficult to get to because it's under the cooler lines, but uh, squeeze and pull. Okay. With this one off, we're going to route the lines. The first line is going to leave this side of the uh, separator and go to the valve cover. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is pre-fit my fitting so I can measure out my lines. The 45 degree fitting goes here on the blower first. And then secondly, the 90 degree fitting goes right here under these hoses. See if I can get that on with y'all on camera. Now, if you're watching this and you wanna know how long to cut these lines, you don't need to watch me measure this unless you wanna do your own custom thing. Just skip ahead a bit and I'll tell you what the measurements are. All right, so first run, I'm going to jump from the fitting on the valve cover up to the can. Um, now, oil separator, but the, the physical can unit here. So you can see I've got a razor blade stuck in it just so that I could more precisely measure this. I've got this fitting here on the valve cover turned up very slightly. So that is a very smooth entry into this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this hose and then we're going to make up the next one and we'll go inside and take some measurements on these. All right, so this next choice is part of my OCD, okay? See, I've got my hose set up right here. I've passed the line under the cooler lines and then routed up to the oil separator. Now, the reason why I chose to do this is if you pass this line above, it goes right over the oil filler, and then you're in a situation where you might have to use uh, zip ties and, and this and that to try to uh, get it in a nice straight line or disguise it. And I don't think that looks very attractive. I don't think the the uh, the people of JNL would think that's very attractive either. It makes more sense to me to route under the heat exchanger cooler lines. I'm really OCD about the appearance of things like this. So the reason why these are very tight and I'm having to squeeze that fitting underneath them is I've got them very neatly uh, clamped to each other down there whenever I did the install. So they stay really pretty and parallel in just the right place. So I'm going to sneak the, the line for the oil separator underneath it. And let me go ahead and get this one cut through and go make up these lines. All right, everyone, welcome. And you may hear the AC running, but it's South Louisiana and very hot. So I wanna say bravo to JNL. They are using these gates of uh, fuel lines here. This is really, really, really high quality stuff that I use on a lot of the uh, swaps and engine builds and other projects that I work on. I always go out of my way to get this. It is much more expensive than standard hose or fuel line, but it lasts forever. It always stays super soft and pliable. And even when it gets cracks, if it's been sitting out in the sun, they don't burst, not easily anyways. All right, so what I have here is the measurement for the short and the long hose. J and L, if you're watching, or if my viewers are watching and you're trying to put one of these on your car and you got to do it yourselfer, the shorter hose that goes to the valve cover is seven and three quarter inches. The longer hose that goes to the Whipple intake is 17 and one half inches as measured by my piece of tape. Anyways, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and assemble these lines here on the bench where this is much easier to do rather than outside in the heat and bent over. So if you're unfamiliar with these sorts of connections, this is kind of like a, a protective cleanup grommet that goes on the end of it and makes it look prettier. Um, a lot of times you'll see this done with like a heat shrink material or something like that, but this is what you'll see if it's a do-it-yourself type situation for you to put these together. The easiest way that I've found to put these sorts of things together is to slip these on. The first thing we're gonna do though is I'm gonna grab some oil here uh, any oil will do, something nice and light. And I'm going to lubricate the barbs on both sides, just like that. 
and then I'm going to push the covers onto the barbs, just like that. Let me grab a rag. Once the covers are, are gone, clean up after yourself, have some pride in our work here. Next thing we're going to do is put the short hose on this side. Remember that runs off to the valve cover. And you're just going to line that up and push it on all the way. Yep, should be touching bottom. I can feel it. And I'm going to twist it because it's got a natural bend in it to face more towards the valve cover, kind of like that. And I'm going to do the same here as well with the long side that goes to the supercharger that lined up. That pushed on all the way click and they both have that natural uh, bend towards the direction that they need to run so I'm gonna repeat this process remember the uh, fitting that goes onto the valve cover is our 90 degree fitting here and I can already tell just looking at it that the orientation of this needs to be something about like that um, with all of that being said, though, uh, this will be able to twist in here. So I'm not super duper worried about its ability to move. I've already got me some pre-applied lube here on the counter. So let me uh, grab some off of my workbench. Clean my finger off. Push this guy all the way down. And then I'm going to grab the hose. Get it lined up on there and sink it all the way in and you can squeeze the end here and see if you're not all the way down it takes a bit of pressure but you can get it all the way on there you see how i've got that 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 angle on it right here that should meet up perfectly with the valve cover now this one the supercharger inlet is going to face more like this direction remember the the uh oil separator sits like this. This is going to loop under those lines. It needs to face more this way. So again, I've got some pre-applied lube here to my workbench and I am going to lubricate these hose barbs. Clean my finger so I don't make a mess. Push on this shroud, the cleanup piece. And then knowing that I need to start facing this direction, I'm going to push it on facing that direction. Check it a little bit more. And there we go. This, my friends, is a catch can oil separator ready to go onto the car. Now, you're going to hear me accidentally mix the word catch can and oil separator. Those are two functionally very different things. This is a air oil separator. Uh, I just say can because it's shaped like a can, but this is a air oil separator. Regardless, let's go get this stuck in the car. All right, so you can see I've got the oil separator back on its stud, still loose so I can wiggle it around. And I've got the line passed underneath right here, and it should push down a little bit like this and follow perfectly parallel with the heat exchanger lines. And you can see here, a little bit of twist, and it rolls out ever so perfectly parallel with this line. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick this on here, and we're gonna check the angle of these fittings. Let me uh, put the camera down, and I'm gonna get this one popped on. You can see it's sitting right here. It's gotta go under these lines. All right, so the first route I'm gonna show you, I think this looks perfectly clean. Like I said, it comes up under right here right and you can lay the line you see this stud right here you don't want this line getting pinned or rubbing against this stud so the line passes under around follows the lines of the uh the heat exchanger here and it's a nice simple layout of course we've got the valve cover tied in right here and the can as i explained to you is sitting in that perfect position where it's missing this connector right here and the lid of the relay box. Now, something else we can do in this line is cut to the perfect length to be able to do this as well. It can do either, is I can also choose to put another zip tie or clamp up here and force this line to do this, which gives us 
I think, an even cleaner look if you so choose to go that route as well. Let me get this all cinched down. Before I cinch that down, I want to show the people in JNL one thing. These fittings ended up being 90 degrees from each other. So the fitting is 90 degrees like this, and then this fitting turns down at a 90. So side and then straight down for this to, to meet this one correctly. And then of course, these two actually face the same direction. So if this was laid out flat on a table, this fitting would be laying flat on its side, that fitting would be laid flat on their side. They are facing the same direction like this. Wanted to note something here that would be pretty fun, uh, JNL, if you're gonna make up a kit for this. This stud right here once used to hold a harness or something like that. If you included one of those, uh, those hose clamps or wiring harness clamps that zip tie on, that can push onto a stud a lot like the, uh, the factory stuff has. If I could see one right now, I would point it out. Um, but anyways, one of those guys that pushes onto here and then grabs this hose, I've already measured it. It's seven inches from the end of the hose to here. And then someone could literally zoop, zip that on. And then bam, that hose is contained. It can't rub that stud. It could even go this way as well uh, and be flipped over and grab it from either side. Oh, look, I found one. One of these guys, in fact, it's on the stud on the opposing valve cover, pushes onto the stud and grabs the hose like this. I have half a mind to try to steal this one. I wish I had one lying around, but I think that'd be a cool idea, Jano. I've decided that until I can find one, I'm gonna make one with zip ties. Let me, these two zip ties are just laced into each other, grabbing that stud. Let me show you what that looks like. And boom, just like that. There is an oil separator installed. And you can see here using those two zip ties, I've made my own clamp to go onto that stud. If you wanna check the fitment out here, real clean, nice, straight, clean shots, no hard bends. This is all tightened up. The next part of this is testing. I'm gonna drive this car for about 500 to 1,000 miles, at least for the next week. And then I'm gonna show you how much oil that's collected. All right, y'all, it's been about 500-ish miles. Took a, a, a long trip to the office, which is about 200 miles away, plus some trips into town away for uh, some car meets and uh, lots of opportunities to put boost through the motor. And I'm glad to report there is oil inside of this can. So let's see exactly how much. There you go. So, JNL's oil separator most definitely does work. Um, let's talk for a second about why this is important for my viewers that are curious. Oil getting into the intake charge is a bad thing for multiple reasons, but there are two really important ones. For a supercharged car, especially, that oil will end up, just like it's coating the inside of this can with a film of oil, will coat the, the rotors of the supercharger, the inside of the intake, the heads, the back of the valves, everything, and make them all gooey and nasty, and they'll collect any dirt that gets in there. Over time, the backside of the valves will get uh, dirty and carboned up from this. So that that will lead to inefficiencies and possibly if enough carbon buildup happens because of this detonation in the future as those deposits can actually uh, hold and restrict fuel they can even glow on the valves and create hot spots um, the most the foremost problem is that the oil traveling into the uh, intake air charge 
as the motor consumes the air, this oil that is suspended as vapor will actually cause detonation or pre-detonation. The, the oil reduces the octane of your fuel. So I don't have data on the exact pointage, but if you're running 93, you could be, if enough oil is getting in, you could be effectively reducing your octane rating to a level that would cause your motor to miss and detonate, possibly destroying itself. So for a boosted car, especially NA is NA as well. It's not quite as prevalent in NA, uh, the detonation part, but for a boosted car, detonation, knock, ping, that is huge. And this is not just a maybe I should to keep the motor clean. For a boosted car, something like an oil separator is what stands between you and a blown up motor on a hot day. So I highly recommend you get with JNL, you get you one of these kits ordered, and you get it installed on your boosted Coyote before you blow it up. All right, well, that's the end of the video. Now, the last thing I want to give you is some maintenance tips. People ask, how often should I check the level of the oil inside of this can and empty it? Well, depending on your vehicle, just generally, for the first oil change interval, you're probably going to want to check every 500, uh, 500 miles at first to see if it's filling a bunch. That may sound extreme, but some uh, European cars really do move that much oil through a can. In the case of this Mustang, I would check every thousand just to see how quickly you're building. But generally, for most vehicles, it's about half of the manufacturer's uh, recommended oil change interval. Most cars, that's five to seven thousand. Um, me personally, I'll check it every uh, two thousand miles or so. But again, don't let this sit forever and fill up with oil. Check it every for five hundred first and every thousand miles after that, just to get an idea of how quickly your motor tends to push oil into a can like this. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed the content. Uh, I love working with the Whipple Supercharged S650 project. Thank you, uh, JNL, for sending out this awesome oil separator. I did not want the competition. I wanted this guy right here, and they weren't ready with the kit yet. And I wasn't ready to drive all the way up to them up north so that they could use my car to measure fittings and take videos and pictures and stuff like that. So here we are. Um, thank you guys for getting this sent out to me. I hope everyone else has a good time putting this on. And as usual, we love you. God bless. Peace.